Unit A42, an area in Kings County Hospital, is used specifically for people who need to be quarantined. On April 22, 2009, Kings County Hospital has been notified of a potentially infectious exposure on an airplane arriving at JFK Airport. A report has been released saying that the SARS coronavirus may have infected passengers who will be arriving at the hospital in the next 24 hours. This was a drill with no planning on the part of the doctors or nursing staff. Every day, we travel on trains, planes, and buses. We find ourselves in large groups, touching railings, pushing buttons, and sharing the air around us. Infections can spread rapidly in these environments, and they aren't always obvious at first. In order to stave off an epidemic and contain any infectious threats, the public health infrastructure of the United States may have to quarantine seemingly healthy people if they have been exposed to a potentially dangerous pathogen. Please remember that quarantine is different from isolation. Quarantine is used to sequester people who are not sick, but who may have been exposed to a serious communicable disease. Isolation, on the other hand, is used when an individual has symptoms of an illness that is likely to be contagious. As soon as the need for quarantining is identified, the Division of Global Migration and Quarantine at JFK Airport will notify the New York Health Department of the situation and the number of people needing to be quarantined. The Health Department will then advise Kings County Hospital of the need to activate the A42 unit. The Emergency Operations Center at Kings County will be opened and begin preparing the A42 unit to receive quarantined people within 24 hours of the original notice. Meanwhile, the Health Department will arrange to transport quarantined people from the airport to Kings County's A42 unit and obtain any needed assistance from the Office of Emergency Management, the Fire Department, and the Police Department. The A42 unit staff will be briefed on the condition that prompted the activation of Unit A42. The staff will then be responsible for ongoing screening of anyone admitted to the unit. The so mom who's with two kids and the mom is not feeling well, we'll have to start, we'll have to immediately isolate that sick person who's not feeling well and then do the investigation to see if they have the disease. But the unit staff includes a medical director, a head nurse, and an administrator. Other support services will be provided by personnel from various divisions of the hospital, including psychosocial services, psychiatry, security, infection control, and environmental and facilities services. The entire staff should know the name of the disease, the mode of transmission, the signs and symptoms, the incubation and quarantine periods, and the relevant infection control measures. When the quarantined people arrive at the hospital, they must be escorted to their rooms in A42. There is no waiting room, so they should be brought in right away to sign their admission documents. Maintaining order from the start will make things run smoothly and cause less stress for everyone. All quarantined people will have referral forms indicating that the Division of Global Migration and Quarantine at JFK evaluated them for a communicable disease. The forms provide each person's name, legal status, diet, medical problems, and languages spoken. The forms also list each person's exposure date and quarantine period, and they describe signs and symptoms the person should be watched for. Until the quarantined people have been deemed well, they are likely to feel stressed and fearful about becoming ill. Boredom will set in due to limited outside contact, along with feelings of loneliness and anger. You can best address these feelings by sharing relevant information about the disease and explaining the benefits of quarantine and the regulations that authorize it. Communicate in a clear, straightforward way and share all available support services and options for self-protection. Fear that somebody had an infection on the plane. Um, have you ever heard of SARS? 
No. It's a type of infection that um, so can be very contagious. So we want to make sure that everybody who's on the plane, we want to put them in one area right now and watch for symptoms. So I'll, at the end, I'll try to explain to you some of the symptoms that we're going to watch out for. Okay. During a quarantine, okay. people with very different backgrounds and temperaments may have to live in close proximity under stressful conditions. It is important to maintain an environment of cooperation and goodwill, even while enforcing a special code of conduct. I do, I do. I have been okay, here for uh, 10 hours. Okay. Quarantined people will have to respect a ban on smoking within hospital buildings, for example, but nicotine patches can be provided on request. Keep the door closed at all times when a person is in respiratory isolation. If the person has to leave the room, make sure that he or she wears a mask. No quarantine person should enter someone else's room without being invited. Physical and verbally aggressive behavior is prohibited and must be corrected on the spot. It includes, but is not limited to, cursing, defacing hospital property, shouting at staff, and touching other people. Drugs, alcohol, and tobacco are prohibited, as are illicit and criminal acts. He's done. He's, and I can't control him. He's running out of the room. He's bored. He's, I don't want to, but I don't want to be here. I know, but we mm -hmm. really... Stop that. Stop throwing things at me. Okay, James, that's good. not okay. Let's take it away, James. I think he's... Okay. I know you're upset. Let's go outside for a second and take a walk. No, okay. James, I know you don't want to be here. I know you don't want to be here. But you have to. You know what? I think maybe we should... If the, the, I, somebody can buy about the social work, a, a person, maybe... Sure. He, he, James, I think he's getting upset with being confined. After admitting someone to quarantine, you must monitor the person's symptoms on the schedule set by the health department. It will be every 12 hours unless otherwise specified. Based on the initial screening, medical care will be provided and medicines will be administered as needed. Hospital staff will provide food to each quarantined person, accommodating all dietary requests within reason. Bedside curtains are hung to give privacy for those sharing rooms. Lights out is at 10 p.m. unless otherwise noted. Make sure every person quarantined knows the schedule and advise everyone if there are any changes. Outside visitors are not allowed in the unit, but the hospital can provide alternatives such as email, telephone cards, and video conferencing. If I have it on my computer, I'll email it over, but I, I, think, I don't think I have it. Infection control practices are important in any situation, but are vital in this one. Practice proper hand hygiene and properly don and doff personal protective equipment such as gloves, masks, gowns, and eye shields. They are available in every anteroom. Infection control teams from the hospital and the health department will determine which practices the situation warrants. It is very important that you involve the quarantined individuals in the care process and encourage self-reporting. Look down, look down. What's your name, sweetie? Deborah. Oh my God, that's a lovely name. Okay, can I feel your belly like you felt his belly? Teach them to look for signs and symptoms. Remember, no one is actually sick yet. Our job is to determine whether quarantined people are becoming ill and to respond appropriately if they do. Reminding people that they have done nothing wrong can help make things easier. Go ahead and lay back. Since you're coughing, we're going to put masks on everybody in the room. If a patient suddenly becomes symptomatic after a daily screening, have a second staff member verify the symptoms. Okay, she said that during the flight, the person sitting next to her was coughing. Give the person a surgical mask and explain what is happening. Then separate the person from the rest of the group until he or she can be transferred to the main hospital for isolation. Go on. Do your best not to touch extraneous okay, surfaces. Hospital police and nursing staff must coordinate the transfer of the patient to the isolation room and the patient must be escorted. Use all infection control measures to manage the patient, 
the patient's belongings and clothing, the patient's room, bed linens, and other potentially contaminated items. All notifications and patient transfers will be completed by the Emergency Operations Center. Once a newly symptomatic patient has been transferred to the main hospital for isolation, give detailed and accurate information to the other quarantined individuals who will worry that they could be next. Tell them exactly what is going on with the symptomatic patient and how much longer the quarantine will continue. A staff member must remain with the newly symptomatic patient to review the procedures and provide reassurance. Confronting people's understandable stress is a key to success. Good communication can keep a quarantine unit such as A42 in order during a crisis. Unit leadership, and the Emergency Operations Center will participate in regular conference calls with the health department and other health authorities. The clinical team caring for the quarantined individuals must be updated regularly by their leaders and relay any information to the patients. If anyone is unsure of what to do, ask a supervisor and follow the chain of command to maintain a cooperative and effective environment.